It's spoiler in time. This is the show where we take all that hard work we do on Cord Killers figuring out how to watch things, and we watch things. And this week, we're going to spoil Deadwood, episode 11 of season two, Westworld season two, episode eight. And as you can tell if you're watching the video, I'm Tom Merritt, Brian Brushwood right next to me. Yeah, dude, in the same studio and everything. Uh, It's good to be here, man. Yeah, it's good to be here, too. So uh, where do you want to begin? Should we begin with the summer movie draft? I feel much better now that I have $712 million, let me just say. You've got a lot of money in our made-up silly game, but (laughs) you know what I feel better about is the level of marketing and promotion going into Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Mm. I just was, uh, 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 Mm. when I went out, I ended up grabbing a bite to eat, Mm. and the televisions, uh, there was a golf game, golf game ended, went to commercial break. Mm. First, there was an ad for um, uh, I want to say like a like a Dairy Queen Blizzard mm-hmm. that was uh, all themed around Jurassic World yep. and kept showing Jurassic World. Yep. Then there was an ad for Jurassic World. Mm-hmm. Then there was an ad for the Jimmy Kimmel Show where it's uh, Jurassic World Week, mm-hmm. featuring all the actors from Jurassic World. And then there's uh, the Skittles that are the, the, not kidding. Oh really? They're special Skittles. I believe it, man. There are the Kinder Eggs are being sold with dinosaurs inside oh, that's right adorable. now. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Jurassic World. Um, so, uh, I've I, seen it. And? It's good. How does it rank in the grand pantheon of all Jurassic movies? Mm, not very high. Like, Actually, I say it's good now. I think I said it was fine. Oh. I think I said it was fine. It's not good. Here's my... Here's my uh, this is not spoilery, but my rough review there, there of Jurassic are- Dinosaurs. There are dinosaurs in Jurassic. <laughs> uh, Jurassic World. I started with like, no, this is pretty great. This is pretty fun. This is uh, good to give at your eye by it. Yeah, this is great. And I'm halfway through. I'm like, yeah, it's getting a little predictable and a little silly. But I, I bet they bring it home. I ended with, that was ridiculous. Oh really? Yeah. So you did not like Jurassic World one? I did not like. No, this no. This is I'm talking about Fallen Kingdom. Oh, right got now. it. This one. That this was one. Fallen. Yeah. That was, I liked Jurassic World one. I was like, this is fun. It is it Great better way than to Jurassic Park? New life. No, but franchise. it breathed new life. I liked it. Uh, this one, I started out liking it, and they just got so predictable. So uh, let's take let's take a look at the standings and how much money would this have to make for us to catch up with you? Night Attack is at two fifty five. We have two movies. We have Skyscraper and Jurassic World. Uh, if, if if the previous Jurassic uh, World movie did uh, what uh, uh, four fifty or something, so I mean obviously if it made the same money, we're gonna we're gonna blow you out of the water. But if this one does two thirds of its predecessor, if it gets three hundred million, mm-hmm. then that puts us in fighting range. And then really, it's up to how well if if, if skyscraper is a surprise hit. I then, would then I would be chance. more confident in skyscraper than I would. In Jurassic World, no kidding. You yeah. think you think it's going to take? I man, the level of the marketing is what's going to sell. Yeah. Side view is people will go out to see it. Uh, but let's see what you know. Wife works for Rotten Tomatoes, but I'd still check it anyway. Uh, what is it at? It's not very high right now. Boy, I don't think the level of anxiety from these Hollywood producers for moments like this, where it's just like, well, we'll see whether or not uh, people like it. Uh, Incredibles 2 is at 95%. Yeah, Incredibles 2 apparently is great. That is fantastic. Uh, Coming soon to theaters, 59%. Oh, geez, it's a real dud. Incredibles 2 doing well. I think John Trekker is going to totally, totally win because they uh, they have coming up. uh, Here, let's let's run down all their stuff. Uh, John Trekker, if you run back up to the top. Uh, oh, you want to go that way? There you go. John Trekker's got. Um, uh, uh, they did Rampage. I feel pretty. They got Mission, Mission Impossible, Fallout, and Incredibles too. Those are the the two big ones. Yeah, and and the first Purge for whatever. Pocket first Purge change. will make up some money, but yeah. yeah. But but Incredibles two could be. So they're already at. They're pretty close to Night Attack. So Incredibles two does 300, 400 million. Now all of a sudden they're nipping at your heels. Yeah. Mission Impossible does another hundred. If, if Fallout and Incredibles two both do two fifty. Uh, and the first purge gets them over. I mean, 250, 275. First purge gets them over the line. They win. And and you're out of movies. Did Hereditary already yeah, come out? That was it. Hereditary came out to 13 million, honestly, which was like, oh, okay. That's that's okay. <laughs> that's some amount of that money. Is, that is a number <laughs> I'm not surprised to see. Yeah. 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 It's sure. not like seven where I've been like, oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, 
Well, good luck. Uh, it'll be really interesting. I, I guess we'll know whether or not we're in the game based on Fallen Kingdom's opening numbers. But man, yeah, look Fall, at that Fallen Kingdom in two weeks. Uh, so this week it's Incredibles two. I don't think that's going to change much because we expect it to do well for John Trucker, but it won't put them in first. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom will come out June twenty second. That will tell us if you're still in the game or not. Uh, and then it's a matter of waiting for Skyscraper on July thirteenth and Mission Impossible Fallout on July twenty seventh. Right on, man. Yeah. Although, don't forget Tell It Anyway at $279 million, and they have Uncle Drew, Ant-Man and Wasp, and Crazy Rich Asians. It doesn't feel like those three can combine, but yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't totally ignore them yet. Yeah, I'm already ignoring them. Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, talk about Westworld Episode 8, Season 2. We're going to spoil uh, what I thought was going to be a bottle episode that I might be kind of bored by and ended up being, uh, and as I think you said as well, one of the best episodes they've done. Yeah. Uh, I loved it because it took a place and a situation with which we had become familiar and we saw it through a fundamentally different lens, a lens that we've not explored. We, uh, we got to witness through exquisite direction, storytelling, set location, uh, 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 and, and a collection of what was a one. I did not even think about the fact that every time we saw the Lakota, it was always that same guy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know why that didn't track with me that it's all the same dude. I was like, oh, it's another one of them, the other, whatever that is, uh, the, the painted Indian dudes or whatever. Well, because they never spoke much, so you didn't really build that like sense of voice and character. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and they were always uh, and they're all portrayed as a as a whatever thing. Um, but. To suddenly take a one-dimensional character and give him a level of depth and gravitas to experience stepping into a wider sci-fi world as a shamanic journey of some variety, of, of him being part of whatever this virus is that is spreading, uh, that, that led to Maeve being able to rewrite the code, and the fact that um, on paper... If you had described this to me, I would have hated everything about it. I would have said, this is a terrible idea. This is dumb. It's trite. It's stupid. Instead, it it uh, it might be the best episode they've done, full stop. Wow. Uh, and I loved it. And I even loved the big twist at the end where it's like, you know, what? She's not just rewriting the code out there. She's doing it right now. Who's she talking to? And you realize she's talking to her daughter because she's becoming this sentient uh, yeah. AI bigger than everything. Um, It was great. It was great. I I. Don't think I, the only things I could think of that I didn't love were some of the trite, like, uh, uh, well, why would you do it that way? You know, there, there, there was some silly stuff in there, but, but I'm already having a hard time remembering them because just in general, all I can remember is just how earnest, how, how great that actor was. I loved the multiple representations of native uh, Americans, uh, as, as, you know, as, as the, the, uh, the peaceful pastoral figures, uh, or the, you know, uh, unreasonable savages and all that. And the fact that he remembers the changes and all that stuff. Oh, uh, what, what are the silly moments was him stumbling up across Ford working in, uh, like, I'm trying to picture what Ford said that caused that tableau to happen where Ford said, listen, I want to cut a scalp off, scalp off of one person, so I'm going to need you to set up a bear in mid attack. Oh no! And a whole my bunch of my people. impression of that was he walked out in the middle of that tableau when it was in progress and went freeze because he didn't get care of their yeah, but, bear. And then, 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 and then was like, I need to get the scalp. And it, I mean, it, that bring fits. In, bring in lights. And, yeah. And okay. Set him up around. Let me roll in my lights. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that it, fits it was, forward. It was beautiful. It was yeah. beautiful, but it was also a bit much. You wouldn't have needed it to be like that, but I, I don't think, I, I was like, yeah, no, that's what would happen if they were in the middle of bear attack and he needed the scalp. He wouldn't do anything but go freeze. Okay, let me get the scalp. Yeah, it was a little bit prettier than it needed to be, though. Sure. All right. All right. Uh, I I liked that we got a different perspective on the same events, which I didn't think was going to be possible. I thought it was going to be, now you're going to hear about all the same events from his perspective and it'll be different because he's a different kind of character. And it was like, oh no, I learned things about how things went down. I, I learned about like, oh, they actually changed them to be savage right at the last minute. That's interesting. Uh, and that's also so Hollywood. Like I love, yeah, they reskinned it. We're like, ah, just change. I that. Love go, go this direction. That they 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 show him from his perspective, saying, "I needed to fight to stay alive because I didn't want to lose the knowledge I had because I had some awareness of that." Turns into like this guy hasn't had an update. 
That like, was great. First, where also, nobody could believe he had stayed alive for that long. Uh, there is a wireless mesh network that Maeve is using to to get an, gain admin access, which means they could do over the air updates. They and they should have. Uh, oh, that's a good point. So uh, uh, they should have written a virus that would have just. Don't think too hard of yeah. it. Not even a virus, just just wireless patch. It's like saying like, "Hey, your Windows machine never broke, so it hasn't been updated." <laughs> it's a good. Uh, well, I mean, but also there are people who live their life that way. Uh, if they broke, they never but, update it. Uh, Delos shouldn't run. Their park correct, that way. correct. Well, and, and also that's another one of the silly moments is yeah, he yeah. stumbles across uh, uh, the guy that William sends out into the desert uh, on a horse. All right, and then uh, and and it's just like if this is supposed to be like future Disneyland, you're telling me they don't have William. You know, William took his safety devices. That's okay. Thing. So you, although it, even then, even then, it's like, but wouldn't they know? That's a wouldn't big they be like leap. Yeah, it's like it's like they build the park so that the humans are always safe and always you know. Yeah, they would the notice fantasy. that he's not around or something. Yeah. Maybe William hit it. I don't know. I I, I don't like the number of times that I have to make excuses for pieces of art. Uh, but this episode was so good that I, I'm, I'm sort of looking the and, other and way. One out. of the other things I love about this too, is what you said earlier about like, I didn't realize that that wasn't the same person is a, an artifact of how native Americans are presented in Western movies for a long time is like, they don't matter. Right. Don't look at them. And I think Westworld leaned into that. Like you're going to discount this character cause he's just the savage. That. Uh, and then use that to set up this episode and say, however, he isn't. And here is his entire story for you. And that, I loved that. That actor was absolutely extraordinary. His level of, of, of gravitas. And uh, I love the fact that the vast majority of all of his lines are spoken in uh, uh, Lakota. Um, uh, the, uh, although there were curious moments that he would just pivot for just one sentence into English and then right back. Mm-hmm. And 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 I want I want to go back and figure out which sentences were spoken in English. Some of them are um you couldn't tell if he was speaking to Maeve's daughter to kind of offload his own story and he just needed someone to talk to or if he definitely felt like she understood the language he was speaking or what. Um, I kind of felt like and and it doesn't really fit but the feel was when he spoke in English it was us witnessing him talking to her. And when he spoke in Lakota, it was him remembering in his mind. Although there are times when he's definitely speaking Lakota to her. So I'm like, "Ah, if if it's supposed to be that, it's not really matching up. So in general, what he would do is the story was on Lakota. But then then he would be like, hold on one moment. And then would walk away or come back or whatever. Like like the in the moment. I need another soda. He would give (laughs) give those those directions. But there was one moment in the middle of the story he pivoted. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was strange. And I've already forgotten what line it was. But Mm -hmm. maybe there's a think piece that somebody has blogged about it or something. Well, the upshot of this episode, of course, is uh, never run in admin access. Uh, keep that, <laughs> keep that rude password under wraps. Uh, weirdly, I'm kind of on board with the affection that our douchey game master is beginning to feel for Maeve. Like he recognizes that something special is happening, mm-hmm. and that, and that, uh, for the first time, it's occurring to him that what the hosts are becoming is some form of actual life with ambition and rights and all of those things. Yeah. Um, I loved, so what this explored a lot of the same territory that we've seen before, but un, using different, more magical, spiritual words for it and seeing it through his eyes just was, was, was wonderful. Uh, seeing him walk the halls uh, of, of, of that place was, it was utterly different yeah. seeing it through his eyes. Yeah, absolutely. And knowing that he was aware before others were, he, uh, you he, know, in, pa- in a, possibly patient zero. Yeah. Basically. And so how many others were? Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 I even had to say something in the moment where he, <laughs> part of his story was uh, in retrospect, I shouldn't have skulked around like Dracula trying to invade the house that you're in with a weapon in hand <laughs> that probably did really creep out your mother at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. When he's outside the cabin. Right, right. I'm it's like, like, all right. <laughs> uh, things can be misinterpreted when you hold a knife up and leer at people through their windows. But again, I found myself for the first time or for the first time in a long time forgiving giant chunks of the sillier parts of Westworld. Whereas uh, previously I felt like it was so deeply serious that I had to hold it to task. And and this one, I don't know, it felt light and ethereal and I, I loved everything about this episode. 
All right, uh, let's oh, go. Uh, oh, one other oh, thing. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, we also noticed, uh, re-watch, or you re-listening to the episode, uh, we, we talked briefly about the fact that originally the piano covers, the, the, the wacky covers of, of uh, culturally of the moment songs, uh, was an artifact of like, oh, it's the Old West uh, uh, theme park, and that's this is old music, Black Hole Sun or whatever. Right. But but they've 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 leaned into that as part of the kind of orchestral score. Yeah. It's I no love, longer diegetic, where cool. it only happens in the saloon. It's just permeated the entire show. I think I love it. Yeah. I, 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 and I think I love that weird moment because because this one we had Nirvana's Heart Shaped Box as right. a piano uh, sad tune. We'd previously seen um, uh, uh, Seven Nation Army as a sitar t- tune or whatever. I don't know if it's just because I'm a sucker for remixes and counterintuitive covers, uh, but but I I love the weird mashup yeah. thing that they're doing. Go subscribe to Coverville at Coverville.com. Yeah. All right. Uh, Deadwood, episode 11, uh, The Funeral. Basically, the entire episode isn't about the funeral, but rotates about the the funeral is the gravity that that is pulling on all the events that happen uh, in this. And and it was interesting what you said after watching it. Yeah, this is on again another one on paper. Nothing happened in this episode. Not one plot point was advanced. They didn't even bury Will. That's right. They, literally nothing happened. And yet, it was one of the best episodes of Deadwood that I've that we've experienced uh, so far. We see real pain. Not just uh, on the one hand, we have um, uh, uh, Raylan. Look, I'm just gonna call him Raylan. <laughs> Raylan's son, you know, is obviously lost. Uh, we we see, you know, his, Bullock. That's uh, his name. Bullock. I couldn't remember Bullock's kid. Yeah, Raylan. but uh, on the on the flip side, like. That vibe, and of course, you know, the town is mourning for their sheriff's uh, son who got run over by by a horse, but they make sure to make sure that the pain of that loss is felt for different reasons, but by the entire community uh, in that there there happens to be a, a very young uh, a Ch- a Chinese whore who's uh, uh, you know thrown into a fire unceremoniously and woo. I still do I still don't see a lot I, I saw that as a counterpoint of you know the the camp generally doesn't value life here's another example of that right but but it but it deeply deeply affected Wu so in other words like to me the theme of this episode was not um, you know any of the politics or whatever the theme is what uh, it's like the writer sat down and said, I want to experience, I want to know how every single character in Deadwood would process a, a real tragedy. And I want to feel their despair and what that means. And, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, we see it in Bullock, you know, being, you know, stoic and, and doing what needs to be done. We see it in uh, Swearingen from hiding from it, making himself unavailable. We see it uh, uh, in, in the rest of the folks by, by being present and being there. We see it in... Um, uh, uh, Bullock's wife with uh, 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 attempting decorum and propriety and eventually losing it and getting out the other side and says, no, 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 we all have to experience this together. But uh, I almost imagine like somebody in the writer's room was like, well, but let's, what about everyone? What about even Wu? It's like, well, you know what? Let's start off by by having one of the Chinese kids. Yeah, yeah. I, st- I still don't too. see it that way. Yeah. I, st- I see Wu as, as merely being upset uh, that the San Francisco guy is doing that okay, because that, that, Wu had no problem throwing people in the pig, pig slough. He's mad that now this guy's burning dead bodies instead of me getting thrown in the pigs. Okay, I get to throw him in the pigs. But th- that would not explain why he breaks down into tears in Swearingen's office Man. trying to get Swearingen. What, what is he trying to get? You don't cry because, you know, they're disposing of bodies. No, because I'm, lo- I'm losing this and I'm frustrated. Uh, oh, so you think he's crying for his own loss of position yeah. in the Chinese community. Yeah. All right. That's a cord killers at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah. You guys, if you're watching along with us, chime in on that one. Yeah. Cause I could, I, I could see where, where you're coming from, but I still don't feel it. Um, especially from Mr. San Francisco guy. He's, he's not sad about anything. Yeah. He ain't processing no deaths. Uh, that's true. That's true. Uh, and, and of course there are people who are, you know, unrelated or unaffected. Not all San Franciscans. I know. <laughs> um, yeah. And also I, I, I really did like, the scene where she says like, no, there'll be no seeing of the body, which I think is as much decorum as it is denial. Correct. Right. Like I just don't want to deal with the fact. 
and people looking at him will make me feel it more. And that moment and then that she the eulogy through, yeah. begins, and it's just like, and the worms will eat the body, and she <laughs> loses it. And and plus, uh, as as often happens during during funerals, there's some awkward moment that 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 only made it feel more real. The fact that she's losing her mind and running and stumbles and falls down yeah. in front of the whole like how horrifyingly embarrassing. Yeah. But but it just made me believe I was there even more. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then I don't know. I w- there there are various other pieces. I mean, the o- the other moment of grief that's that even gets me choked up a little bit thinking about is when uh, the the guy from Dakota, uh, the, the the guy from the Capitol, uh, comes over to Bullock and says, I, "I just need to know this one question. I know you're in the middle of grief." And Bullock says, "Yes," and we're done here. Yeah, and can't say anything else. Yeah, and I'm like, that's real. Yeah, like that he played that like he is his eyes were wide and he's like, you don't want to say anything else to you, me. Not because I'm mad, because I can't keep my myself together right now. There was a full on maelstrom behind that mask yeah. he was wearing and he was able to convey uh, uh, that mask and, and, and the horror uh, and the depths of despair yeah, yeah. hiding right behind it. No, it was really good. Uh, the horrors all want to attend the funeral and. There's it was and, and Trixie was just like, you're going to represent our, mm-hmm. our kind. So uh, no properly. shooting up and no, don't even be drunk. You and yeah. yeah. Uh, also got to see uh, Calamity Jane naked, which I didn't expect. <laughs> right. <laughs> with her, with, with, with her hairy armpits and, and, uh, and uh, uh, a hot bath. Uh, Real hot. Yeah. She's the best character. She's amazing. And, and it, it's an interesting challenge because, um, the wild card character, you know, the, the the outrageous one, the Calamity Jane, which is simultaneously comic relief, but also, you know, a, a pure uh, Jeff Kanata level of just feeling, you know, like she's in the moment and she does good and wants to take care of people or whatever, um, uh, could become cartoonish and also, more importantly, unnecessary to the story. Mm-hmm. But so far, they've done a wonderful job of that balancing act and wherever she shows up, it feels like she's injecting uh, an important reality check to certain things. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say about this particular episode. Because, it was sad. Yeah. We talked about how sad real, it was. Real freaking sad. <laughs> uh, but that sadness was justified. All right. You're killing me. <laughs> hey, uh, somebody, somebody mentioned on Twitter. That's, not, that's too soon. I, I would like very much to know or get confirmation if anybody out there is a fan and listening. Somebody hit me up on Twitter pointing out that Deadwood and Westworld shot at the exact <gasps> right. same ranch. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. In the Hollywood area, yeah. which is which really was a fun thing to wrap my mind around watching both both of them back to back this morning. One of them, and now that you've said that, I can't remember which one's credits has a Utah unit. I wonder if both of them also go did, to did some shot, shots in Utah. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, uh, somebody else hit me up on Twitter mentioning that the Deadwood movie, according to uh, something on Talking Dead, there was a guest on Talking Dead last night Mm -hmm. who casually mentioned that, uh, because we were wondering if the script submitted for Deadwood was going to be a movie, a miniseries, or a Mm -hmm. reboot. Uh, It it was referred to as the Deadwood movie, Mm -hmm. and it was saying that uh, the shooting was going to begin this fall. Yeah. No, everything we read made it seem like a movie, so that's it's good Correct. to hear but, more but it didn't, but it didn't yeah, along that way. Yeah. So, so it seems like we have an answer on that. Cool. All right. Uh, well, thank you, everybody, for supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash cordkillers. You folks who support us on Patreon get this show faster, uh, and we appreciate your support very much. We'll spoil you again next week. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>